Good morning, my loves. Um, first and foremost, I want to apologize for being in my bed. I have a massive headache. Um, I know some know that I get bad migraines, uh, but it was pressed on me for the past few days to get this message across to standards, new standards, um, standards that have been standing for a long time, um, just from different angles. And so I had to go ahead and say, listen, I'm just going to go ahead and do this because I had every intention of getting purdied up and making sure I made this for you guys this weekend because honestly I haven't had time um long story short the first book that I ever published is actually being made into a movie so that's taken up some of my time on top of that I have the standards manual that I'm in the process of writing that I've been trying to get completed because I know it's important to have it out there um and then I got another book title that I started working on so kind of all over the place. I think that's what happens with people that are like overthinkers. Their mind is just always on go. So my mind is always, always working. And then plus I have my other little things that I've got going on. Um, so that's then been the delay in all of the videos. So I'm super, super sorry. People have been getting on me and fussing on me about it. Sorry that I've been so busy. <clears throat> but this I think is very pressing because this week was overwhelmed overwhelming for me with um a lot of the similar phone calls um, and stories. So I wanted to go ahead and get this out there and I wanted to get it addressed from a standards point. Um, some know that I was at one point, I don't even know if you clarify as a prodigal because at the time I had my affair, my husband had already left, um, left the home and was already involved in his own affair that I didn't know about. So I don't know if I'm technically called a prodigal. However, um, I am there. Um, I was there. Um, I was praying before the affair that I had, um, which I was standing then and didn't realize I was standing. Then I had the affair, realized the mistake. Um, and honestly, for a while, I really let things just be. I didn't really care. Um, and then, like I said, at some point, a woman came to me and told me about standing. Um, so I did a lot of research on it because, of course, we know that's who I am. I just research everything. It's like, you're not just going to tell me something and then I'm just going to go for it. I need to see this and read this for myself. So I started doing a lot of researching and, and joining things, to you know, just to kind of get a feel for everything. What I've learned on this stand um, it kind of groomed me to be the mentor that I am now. Um, still standing, but what I teach my girls is something a little different because I've noticed in standards, we look for our hope in everybody else. We look for our hope in everything else. Um, the, the, I remember when I first started standing, I have seen... I kept reading this thing about the Swift truck. And I'm like, what is what is it about a Swift truck? So I asked. And they said, oh, that means that was God's little sign of seeing um, or that he's moving swiftly. I live in Atlanta. And I see semis all the time. And I see if I just drive close to 20, I see at least four Swift trucks. So that didn't work for me. And then... They'll say, oh, well, this semi says this and this semi says that. And, and I was like, you know what? I'm not really buying that. Um, granted, yes, God gives you signs and wonders. But see, what we don't understand when we're standing, God gives us signs and wonders that we understand. They're not going to give us, he's not going to give us a sign and wonder through somebody else to fit somebody, to fit me. Meaning, um, some lions are symbolic to me. One time while I was in prayer, um, I prayed. Um, while I was in prayer, God gave me this vision of a lion. And at first, I was like, well, why would you? No, first I said, oh, my husband has a tattoo of a lion. And then I was like, what is a lion supposed to mean? So when I came up out of prayer, I started looking up scriptures related to lion because that's the thing that we have to learn to do, too, is when we get these visions or words or something, and it just stands out to us. We've got to research what that really means and what God's trying to say to us. 
again, the standards don't understand that, but we'll get into that. So anyways, um, I started looking up lions. My daughter had to go to work. And lo and behold, as we pull out of our subdivision, I literally drive right past my husband. That's why I say God gives you signs that are to you, that mean to you, mean something to you. A swift truck means nothing to me. It may mean something to somebody else. I'm not saying that swift truck don't mean anything. What I am saying is that everybody has their own sign and own language that God speaks to you in. God speaks to me through research. He knows I research, I read, I study. So he gives me little things that's just going to make me think. And I'm going to look into things more and more. That's just how he works. So as standards, we have to understand, one, things aren't going to happen right away. They don't happen right away because God's doing something in your spouse and God's doing something in you. Um, this week was the biggest. Um, what I got a lot was, well, he's not saying anything. He's not doing anything. Um, he's, he's getting married in a church. Listen, we've all watched the movie Bird Box. There's another movie called um, The Quiet the quiet room, and I think there's another one where you can't speak or it says don't speak or something like that. Um, no, the quiet room is one where you don't speak. But anyways, I watched that yesterday, and then I also saw the bird box where she has to be blinded. Yesterday they couldn't talk because they would be attacked. And then my daughter says, you know, I saw this meme where it says, with the reference in the movies, and I instantly thought about Speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil. Remember the three monkeys? One has his ears covered, the other one has his mouth covered, the other one has his eyes covered. That's how we have to be as standards. Honestly. If we look at what the world is saying, if we look at what the world is doing, we can't see what God is doing. If we hear what the world is saying, we can't hear what God is saying. If we speak what the world is saying, we can't speak what God is saying. So you guys have to get, start walking around like monkeys. Cover them because you need to hear God. You don't need to hear what the world says. Of course, the world is going to make you think, oh, he's with this other person and that, that's going to work out. He's doing, he, he said this, he said that. Trust me, I was there. I was there. That's how my whole affair started in the first place because I was praying, and the enemy felt it made me believe that your husband isn't changing. Your husband isn't going to do anything. So I said, well, I'm going to go do me. And he actually was coming around. But I couldn't see that because I didn't have somebody encouraging me for that. I didn't see the little signs that when he was coming around, I this is how the enemy will play you guys, and this is why it's so important that you have to stay in the word and stop paying attention to the world. When my husband was coming around and he was making little efforts, you know what the enemy told me? He says, oh, he's just wanting attention. He just feels like you're, you're, you're venturing off. He feels like you're going to leave him. He doesn't really want you. That's what the enemy was telling me. But it was all lies. My husband found out about the affair a mutual friend came back and told me how he cried. That hurt me to my heart because my true intentions were never to hurt my husband. My intentions were for my husband to do what he needed to do. And I stopped praying and I let the enemy creep in and then the enemy started telling him lies Then the enemy started telling me lies. And that's what the enemy is doing to you. And anybody else that's involved, the enemy is going to tell all those people lies because he has to create division. If he creates division, he can't keep you on your knees to pray. He's going to keep you balled up crying and confused and hurt. So that's why it's so important that you have to stay in the word. You have to read. You have to fast because that's wherever the answers are at. You have to pray. You have to set out a set time to pray. You have to look at it like your spouse is on the surgery table. When your spouse is on the surgery table, you don't stop praying 
until the doctor comes out to tell you something, right? And in some cases, you still don't stop praying. Because it, the, what the doctor comes out and tells you could be negative, and you're going to be saying, no, I don't believe your report. I believe God's report. That's the same way you have to approach your marriage. If you have enough faith in God to bring your spouse or your loved one off of that surgery table, you have to have enough love and faith in God for him to bring your spouse out of the um, out of the sin that they're in, out of the rebellion that they're in, and everybody that's involved. You have to get to a point where, one, you're praying for your spouse, the other person, if they're involved with another person, all of the children involved, and all of the people that are involved. Because, again, the devil creates confusion. Um, and I know I can use my story as an example because it's similar to everybody else. I know for a fact that the devil used a lot of our mutual friends to cause division between him and I. The people that we trusted and loved was the middleman going back saying this to him and then they'll come back and say this to me and then they was twisting everything so we have to pray for them as well you may not know what these people i didn't know this person was doing this until after the fact but you going forward you have to pray that ungodly people are removed and that godly people are placed and that's probably why i found out after the fact as to why they were removed because they weren't doing the godly things that God wanted them to do and that we needed them to do. We need the truth. We need love. And sometimes, again, people, when people are in the world and they're looking at the world and even Christians, you've got Christians that ride the fence and don't understand the word for themselves. Um, they have a tendency to tell you worldly things instead of Christian things. Hence again, why you have to get into the word for yourself. You have to know the word for yourself. Because if you don't know the word for yourself, somebody and anybody can come back and tell you anything they want to, and you can believe it. Like when they came and told me about standing, I could have just ran with it. And then I could have looked at everybody else for hope. I can't do that. If I wouldn't have read... Then when that person comes to me and says, well, God wants you to be happy. He doesn't want you standing for your marriage. God stands for me every day. When I'm right or when I'm wrong. And he patiently waits when I'm wrong for me to come back and correct myself and say, God, I'm sorry. If God has that kind of love for me, then God has that kind of love for your spouse and anybody else. And you have to have that same exact kind of love. But you wouldn't know that because you're not reading the word. That's where your peace and comfort comes in at. The more knowledge you have, the more peace and comfort you have. And that's just the truth. I wouldn't know that Judgment Day is coming if I wouldn't spend time in the Word. There's Judgment Day on so many levels. For the ones that have hurt me, the ones that have betrayed me, the ones that have wronged me, that I'm still praying for, God answered and said that Judgment Day is coming. I wouldn't know how to carry myself as a wife a stander, or a believer if I wasn't in the Word. I would only be able to stand and believe and trust the way that somebody else stands, believe and trust. So you have to study the Word. You have to fast. You have to pray. You have to surround yourself with people that are truly, truly standing. My dream that I have may not be the dream that you get. God may not restore my marriage the way he restores your marriage. And just because my God restored my marriage tomorrow or yesterday doesn't mean yours is going to be restored tomorrow or yesterday. Everything, every marriage is its own in its own. God does what he's going to do to each individual in his own time as well as in their marriage in their own time. So you can't look to me for answers. You can't look to your fellow group member for your answers. You can only look to God. I, one day, um, one day I was frustrated because we all get frustrated as standards. We want to just throw in the towel. We want to walk away and we just want to give up. 
but that's not how we're supposed to do. But one day I was super, super frustrated and I cried out to God and I said, listen, I just need confirmation. And then I thought about my mentor. And so I asked her, I said, um, why are, I said, how come you've been standing for 20 years and God's not did anything? She said, because I don't pray and fast like I should. That came from my mentor who was being honest. By the end of the conversation, she said, let's pray that I fast and pray like I should. Granted, she prays for everybody else, but she prays for her spouse last. You have to have that dedication. In the morning when I wake up, well, I'll take that back because I, 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 it takes forever for me to get up. In the morning while I'm laying in bed, I'm praying. As soon as I'm able to open my eyes, I'm in the word. I'm, I'm reading the scripture and I'm praying. I'm in the closet. I'm on my bed, but I'm praying. If I'm running late, the music is off in the car and it's me and God's time. A lot of times now it's me and God time because the word says that you have to pray earnestly. Um, and then I set date, I set time to remind us because I pray for other people um, that are important and relevant to my situation. So I have to cover them as well. So I'm constantly praying for them. So I set reminders for that. And of course, then that's my bedtime ritual is pray. And then I have different times that I fast because it's imperative. This stand that you're on, a lot of people want to walk away because their husband isn't doing what they want to do. The thing is, you have to honor God. God tells us to stand for our marriage because God loves us. He gives us victory. Even if there are marriages that we can say people die that are still standing, but I guarantee you those that have died and still standing, they go to heaven because they they respected God's word, they trusted God's word, and they acted on God's word. And that's what I'm telling you. If you're standing and you're not seeing action right now, remember, your stand is a blessing in your finances. Your stand is a blessing in your in your children. Stand as a blessing for that wayward spouse. Stand as a blessing for your family and for friends, for your job, whatever else you're praying on. Remember, your stand opens the door for those blessings. See, while we're standing, if we walk away from that stand, we're telling God, well, I believe you to get me this job, but I don't believe you're going to bring my spouse back. You can't do that. You can't put God in a box. You have to let God be God at all times. So you have to trust him to know that, okay, God, you're going to restore this marriage when you get ready. You're going to open this door when you need to. You're going to bless this person when you need to. That's how it's going to be. So don't take your stand as I'm only standing for my marriage. Your stand is for everybody else. Listen, my stand right now covers my children, my husband, it covers this other woman, it covers my family, my friends, income. If you don't see your answer in your husband, it's over here. But only time in God and a relationship with God would help you see the blessings that he's answering over here. And if he's blessing you and answering you with that, he's going to bless you and answer you over here. But God wants more of you. Your, your relationship restored is delayed because either you're not committed to something he wants you to commit to, you're not doing something he wants you to do, um, you're not believing the way that he needs you to believe, or you're looking at the things that you're, you're not supposed to look into. Last week while we fast, we were supposed to be fasting on Ephesians 4, 20 through 30. <clears throat> it's self-evaluation. I'm big on self-evaluation. Um, and so that, when he gave me that scripture, and then my friend came to me and says, God says we need to, to pray. And I said, 
he did say that. And we need to fast too. So when you're surrounding a group, you'll see how God starts moving in the group. But anyways, it taught us bitterness. And then when you look up what bitterness is, we see that we actually do some of those things. We see how we get angry and we get frustrated. We see how we're impatient and we're not acting God-like. If you're not changing that, your spouse is not going to see that. I promise you, if you keep your eyes focused on God, you keep interceding on the behalf of your spouse, whether you're divorced, whether you're still married, whether they are talking about a divorce, keep your eyes on Christ. Let God deal with them because he is, I promise you. I promise you, I've seen little things. And when you get something like they're getting married in a church, don't get mad. It's not God's will for your husband to remarry or your spouse to remarry. It's not. So don't get mad. God knows they're doing that. He's going to fix that. It's temporary. If God says, or um, you see this, this other person is posting things, and, and you think there's happiness or your spouse isn't reaching out to you, I guarantee you God's interrupting their dreams. I guarantee you God's on their thoughts. Because every negative action that you're receiving, you're seeing, you're hearing, that is nothing but the enemy throwing that to you to say, look, God's not doing anything. So when an enemy throws that at you, you say, devil, you're a liar. I rebuke you and I cast you out. And you get in your word and you pray. Because God has the last say so. I don't care if they seem happy, if they are getting married, if this, 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 and this. Trust me, I've observed it enough. I've seen enough. I've witnessed enough. I've experienced it enough. When God is moving, so is the enemy. You've got to learn when the enemy is moving and you've got to cast him down. And that's where you build your strength up in the word. Your depression has to go. We all still battle with it. The depression has to go, the confusion, the worry. Give it to God. And every time you can't say, God, take it. If you have to say it a hundred times a day, you say, God, take it because he has to. So as a stander, it is imperative that you read fast and pray. It is imperative that you hear the, you have the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil method. Because you can't hear God. Talk to God on a regular Stop looking at everybody else for your answers. Stop looking at everybody else for your hope. If you need a sign, you go to God and say, God, give me a sign. If you want a dream, say, God, give me a dream. That's how it works. Her sign is not your sign. Her dream is not your dream. His movement in her is not his movement in you. It is encourage, if anything, it, to, it is to encourage you to read more, hear more. And then, oh, I have to go back to this because I wanted this to be important as well. Because um, Bob, oh God, I can't remember his name. Anyways, he was a prodigal and now he helps, um, he, went, he, mar he divorced his wife, was about to get remarried. But instead, he went, he felt the prayers of his wife, went back to his wife, said, I'm going to marry you because I want you to stop praying for me. And they ended up having a better marriage than the first time. So now he writes books. And, well, no, I think he's passed away now, but he writes books, wrote books. Um, but anyways, he has this thing where he says um, 18 signs to know that your spouse is coming back. If you guys haven't read it, you need to read it. It's just a quick article that gives you signs. Um, 
when somebody comes to you negative, because this is what I've been experiencing lately, so this is why. When somebody comes up to you, even if they're a Christian, they go to church, whatever their situation, if they come up to you negative about your stand or contradicting your stand, that's the enemy. And if that's the enemy, that means that God's on the other side moving. Stand still. If you don't hear God, stand still. But that is nothing but the enemy, which is why you have to know your word. Because just like yesterday, um, this guy was trying to convince me to talk to him. I said, you do know I'm standing for my, my spouse, right? Yeah, I know, but God said X, Y, Z. And I know that my ex-wife, she did X, Y, Z. And then this is what happened. Okay. And then he tried to throw scriptures at me. And guess what I did? I threw them right back. Because now I know the word. And I'm still learning the word. So the more that you read the word and you study it and you talk to God, you understand things. So when people come at you like that, you can retaliate. Instead of saying, oh, maybe he is right. Maybe I should read that. Maybe I should do what he said. Maybe God is telling me it's time to move on. If you are in your, I cannot speak and will not speak on second marriages. What I will say about second marriages is if God told you to stand for that marriage and you now know that you're supposed to stand, do what God says do and stay in his will. Because if you didn't know that in your first marriage, then God really doesn't hold you to that. What I will say, though, is what I've learned is your first marriage is your covenant marriage and your only marriage. Your first marriage is your covenant marriage and your only marriage. That is the one that God honors. And if you are one person is standing for that spouse, God is moving in that marriage, whether you're divorced, you're still together, you're separated, whatever it is, your first marriage is your covenant marriage and your only marriage in God's eyes. It doesn't matter what the law says. It doesn't matter what people say. It's what God says. That's your marriage. So anyways, when I argued with him, I could throw back scriptures relevant to my covenant marriage, my stand. And then God confirmed my argument last night with Malachi. Suggest you go read Malachi. It's four short chapters, but it's about judgment, how God honors the one, the ones that are scared of him and honor his will. Um, Because I've said it before, God, I want to date, but I'm so scared of upsetting you. So scared of st stepping outside your will. You have to be afraid of God. Not what that man says, not what that man says, not what that man does. Be afraid of God and what God can and will do to, to you. Or to anybody else. I, would, I wouldn't want my children hurt based off of my sins. I don't want my spouse hurt anymore off of my sins. So you have to be careful about that. Um, the other thing is he'll send Mr. Right. So remember when I told you about the affair that I had when I thought my husband just wasn't coming around? In my eyes, that was Mr. Right. He was married, but in my eyes, he was Mr. Right. He did everything that I needed him to do at that time. That was the devil. Because he see God doing something over here. Even now. The phone calls. The inboxes. The trying to be persuasive. The ex from the past. Yeah, those all come up. Those all come up. Granted, they could be speaking the truth. One, one told me the other night. I should have never let you get away. And he says, let go and let God. <gasps> yeah, the devil can be that deceiving. The ex from the past that admits that he never should have let me go. Said, let go and let God. But if you're not in a relationship with God, you wouldn't know these things. So, granted that attention have been nice it wasn't of God and it's not God's will 
So you have to know these things that when God starts sending these people around you that, oh, you're so pretty. You're so handsome. Let me just take you out to eat. Mm -mm. I'm good. Well, God wants you to be happy. I know he does. This stand is torture. It's hell. Yes, I know that. But I see the blessings. I see the little doors. You just have to stay on course and stand strong. So that was, this was not supposed to be 30 minutes, but I wanted my standards to know. And I want other people to know. Of course, I'm praying that this gets shared because you have people that are just coming into standing um, <clears throat> and don't understand. And I hate that the season standards give them this perceptive. I want new standards to go in knowing your stand is your stand. It's okay to stand with other standards. But stand the way God wants you to stand. Don't stand the way somebody else wants you to stand. If he needs you to do this, then you do that. Don't look for signs and wonders in somebody else. Don't look for your hope in somebody else's mirror. Look for it in your own. Look for it in God. God will provide. He will provide the signs. He will provide all of that. But you got to do it his way. You've got to read. You've got to pray. You've got to fast. And just because it's not happening today does not mean it's not going to happen tomorrow. Just because it's not happening this first six months doesn't mean it won't happen that six months. God is a man that will not lie. If he told you he is going to do it, it is going to come to pass as soon as you do what he needs you to do. Which is why I'm probably laying in the bed with a headache getting this message out to you because God says, I asked you to do something two days ago. So <laughs> that's how scared I get of God. You know, like, okay. Y'all just going to see the best in me, but I'm going to do what God asked me to do. So, I love you guys, baby, forever and always. Um, Till the next time, I will. I, I said that last time, I'm going to try to get my messages out a little bit more because it's imperative. I've got some people that have, you know, obviously need me and haven't been able to get to me or get at least just get my message. So, I just want you guys to see that, hear that, know that I love you guys. I'm here even if I'm not available, it's okay to text me, call me. If I don't answer, text me. I'll respond like I can. But I'm still here. I'm just all over the place. But I love you guys forever and while always. Proudly stand. Stand proud. Hashtag proudly standing. Love you guys.